uh, uh, to my sermon, I'm going to give you eight quick things that you can walk away with, and then I'm going to go into the sermon. Okay? Three, eight. <laughs> eight, three. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, when it comes to fasting, there are some, there are things that we get out of fasting. All right? Uh, the first thing we do, uh, it, it tells us, uh, well, well, let me back up by saying this. Yeah, let me back up by saying this. Uh, uh, in Acts chapter 13, we'll get to that in a couple more weeks. Uh, as they ministered to the Lord and they fasted, uh, uh, the Lord said, separate uh, me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. All right? So one of the things that we can re receive out of our fasting is uh, they received the, the assignment for life while their church at Antioch was on a fast. So while they were fasting, uh, they received a life assignment here. So you can go on a fast and you can get things, all right, you know, and we get things not because we're going after things, we're going after God, all right? There are three things that fasting will do in your life, okay, this year, all right? If you look for them, if you believe by faith, number one, it will bring the spirit of release. It will cause there to be a release in your life. Uh, 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 in other words, when you're fasting, you are talking and telling that devil, turn my stuff loose. All right. Uh, one of the things that fasting does is it breaks the spirit of delay. The delay uh, is different from waiting. There, are, When a woman gets pregnant, there's a natural process of her having a baby. That is a natural process. You can't speed that up. But, well, but at the end of the nine months, now it's time for the baby to come. If the baby don't come at the end of the nine months, a spirit of delay come up. And that's when the doctors get involved, okay? All right, so a, a delay. Watch out. You can, you can break the spirit of delay. It causes there to be a spirit of release, okay? Now, the second thing, nine, uh, Acts chapter, not in Acts, Mark 9, 29 says, and he said unto them, this time, this kind can come forth but by nothing but by fasting and prayer, okay? So we see here that uh, uh, it's important for us to know that there are certain things that won't happen without fasting and prayer, that won't happen. It's a principle. That's why God will, uh, uh, that's why the principles of God work out of relationship. Depending on the relationship, he will tell you what principle uh, to utilize and to use, okay? Now, the second thing that will come through uh, this fast, not only a spirit of release, but there will be a spirit of restoration, a spirit of restoration while you're fasting. Write that down. So you're praying for restoration. Listen to what Joel chapter 2 verse 12 says. Turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting. And with fasting. You know, that's what the Bible talks about. Faith and works. So you tell me, I turn my Lord with, I turn to my Lord with all my heart, all my soul. He said, yeah, 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 yeah. And a little fasting. All right? And so I want you to see here, and notice what it says, turn ye uh, even to me with all your heart and with fasting, verse 25, and I will restore the years uh, uh, in your life. In other words, when you take on a fast, he's, you have the ability to have a, a, a restoration, a spirit of restoration. I will return to you everything that the uh, locust and the, and, the, and the canker worm and uh, uh, has taken from you, okay, that we're eating, all right? So, uh, uh, when you begin to fast and pray by uh, uh, your declarations, you can begin to believe God for a rest restoration of health, okay? Uh, blood flow, all right? Uh, healing, uh, a restoration of marriages. You can save your marriage by fasting and praying. You can have a restoration of families. You can have a restoration of ministry. Remember last week we were talking about one of the things that happens is that God sometimes will cease from using you depending on certain circumstances. Well, fasting and prayer can cause a re restoration. You can get back in the game, out of the stands, down to the bench, off the bench, into the game. Okay? Uh, uh, and then there's a restoration of destiny. Sometimes uh, uh, we have done things to abort our destiny. Fasting and prayer would get you a restoration of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of destiny and also a restoration of missed opportunity. And finally, uh, uh, notice what it says here, that there will be a spirit of reward that will be released on this fast. Chapter 11 of Hebrews uh, uh, says this, I'm a rewarder of them that diligently 
seek me. All right? So when you're fasting, when you do this, he'll release a spirit of reward on your life. Uh, uh, he'll re financial rewards. Uh, financial reward will come to people who are seeking him in fasting and prayer, you know? And so you have to, during this time of fasting and prayer, uh, announce and declare uh, uh, that you want to have a, a reward. <laughs> I'm going to be rewarded. Uh, this will be my best financial year ever that I've ever had in my life. That's what you begin to say. That's what you begin to declare, okay? Uh, based on your time of fasting and, 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 and prayer. Okay, now, let's go to our message for the day. You got those three things up. So I got all my teachers got that out, and, and I know my, some of my pastor friends and, and grabbed hold of that, and then I took off and gone. All right, now. Uh, let's go to the Word, and I want to show you some things out of the Word, and then I want to give you a truth real quick, a truth real quick, before I get into the, the, uh, the full message. Now, there was a certain man in uh, Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Now, I want to uh, title this message, uh, uh, um, Equality in God. Equality in in God, okay, because God brings equality. Man cannot, will not uh, bring us into a place of equality, you know. Uh, 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 that the nature of man and mankind is a pecking order on some of them. They want to always uh, see who is the best, who's the tallest, who can speak the further, who's the best preacher, who's the best teacher, who, you know, uh, they're, they're that competitive nature of Adam that sometimes will not equate, okay, uh, 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 won't always have one up. That's the difference between a teacher. The Bible says we have a lot of teachers, uh, but we don't have many fathers. A father, uh, uh, a teacher will tell you why, uh, tell you what to do. Uh, uh, a father will tell you why, uh, what to do and why do it and what you should do next, okay? He, uh, uh, he is excited uh, about you superseding him, being better than him, smarter than him, you know? Uh, um, you know, watching and those of you who are millennials, uh, you all can watch this whole LeBron James thing uh, and watch how he is working with the younger guys and trying to help them get better than him. How he's working with his own son, uh, and his his desire is that he'll be able to play uh, with his son in the NBA. So, so we see here a father tells the secrets, all right? Uh, that 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 a uh, teacher holds on to. So we see here that a Cecil, uh, 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 he is, verse number two, a devout man and one that feareth God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. All right, so this is Cornelius. The Bible is talking about Cornelius. So I want to give you eight quick things um, that you can grab hold to before I go all the way into my sermon, okay? Now, there are eight things that do not save the soul. I want you to get this because uh, it's important, and I think that it drives away some of the religious spirits that will get us deceived. Okay, my job is to bring light, and uh, uh, I'm a life giver, I, and and I want to point out so you can have light. Number one, I want you to know that being devout, pious, or dutiful of religion will not save you. Okay. <laughs> Again, we talked about he was a devout man. You can be devout and not saved. Okay, uh, the Bible says that he was devout. And then it also says that his soldiers were uh, uh, devout toward him. Okay, all right. So uh, it is used of Canadians being devout according to the law. It is used of religious unsaved men in Acts. Okay, so you can be devout and unsaved. <laughs> oh, Number two, watch this. Fearing God. Fearing God does not save you. All right? We see that in verse two. Demons also fear God, uh, as well as unsaved men. You know, we see that in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 18. We see in James chapter 2, verse 19. You can fear God and not be saved. I'm a God-fearing man. That don't mean nothing if you ain't saved. Number three, you can giving, uh, 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 giving much alms don't save you. Don't say. See, there are people who give money uh, instead of their heart. Uh, a man sometimes with a male-female relationship, uh, and if you boy, if you go back to my YouTube uh, relationship tips, boy, I have some hot stuff on there. 
One of the hot tips is men will give you money instead of their heart. Don't be tricked by him uh, buying you something. <laughs> you know, some guy, some guy stingy ain't going to buy you nothing else. But uh, a guy sometimes will give you money, or give you a credit card, not give you his heart. Take the credit card, uh, but also don't be deceived to get his heart. Uh, uh, sometimes in a relationship, married, he'll he'll hurt you, and then he'll give you some money that instead of saying, I'm sorry. Take the money, but, you know, let him know he's still missing. He's coming up short. All right, watch this. So you can give alms uh, 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 and not be saved. The, the Pharisees did it, <clears throat> and yet rejected salvation. We see that in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Uh, one may give all that he has and be lost. We see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3. So you can give money and and yet not be saved. Uh, you can pray always. <laughs> and I'm a man of prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can pray, 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 and not be saved. Notice what it says here. The uh, uh, sinners and hypocrites uh Pray often, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, and Luke chapter 18, verses 9. Men even pray in hell, but it avails nothing. Notice what it says in Luke chapter 16, verse 23. So prayer alone will God save you. Woo, good God Almighty. All right, I know my people got to take bed and pencil writing and running. All right, now watch this. Uh, uh, seeing visions don't save you. We'll get to that in a minute. Verses 3 through 6, we see that there. Unsaved men have, unsaved individual, unsaved men have seen vision and uh, that did not save them. We see that in Job chapter 33, verse 14. We see that in um, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 7. Being just in the eyes of men don't save you. Okay? Uh, we see that in verse 22. We'll get down there in a minute. Having a good reputation. Verse 22, don't save you. Having a good reputation, don't save you. That's, that's, uh, that's number seven. And last but not least, fasting will not save you. <laughs> the Bible tells us in Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 16, that fast, the hypocrites did that weekly. So you've got to understand here uh, that there's only way uh, that we can be saved is through uh, uh, our faith in Christ Jesus. Okay, and I'm going to give you an opportunity uh, to be saved, if you're not saved, at the end of this message. Okay, now, let's get started. I want to pull this apart and put it back together. I had to rearrange some things there. You know, I, 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 love, I love doing what I'm doing. This is so much fun to me. Thank you all for uh, allowing me to do this. <clears throat> all right, now, watch this. Here we go. When we look up here, uh, uh, he was a certain man from Caesarea, all right? And it was predominantly a Roman city on the shores of the Mediterranean in Judea. All right? It is the headquarters of the Roman government, governor of the province of Judea. Archaeologists have discovered a stone from the building in Caesarea uh, inscribed it was the name Pontius Pilate. Okay, so we see here that this is a historical fact. I love uh, bringing historicity in it. Uh, because it, it, it lets us know that we're reading out of a Bible uh, that is not a mythical Bible. Jesus was not a mythical Jesus, but it's a historical uh, Jesus. Okay, now, uh, 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 Cornelius was a centurion of what was called the Italian band, all right? Uh, Cornelius uh, was even an officer in the Roman soul army. A patriotic Jew of that day would naturally dislike or even hate him. Okay, so here's this possible conflict here. Now, he was, a, uh, 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 he was a devout man and one who feared God. Yet, Cornelius was a, doubt man, uh, was a devout man, a man who feared God, who prayed to God always, uh, and who had given alms generously to those who were in need. So the Bible here, uh, Dr. Luke has given us a description about the man and the character of the man. Now, uh, 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 Cornelius was in a category of what the Jews called a, a God-fearer, you know, one who feared God. These Gentiles who loved the God of Israel, they were simply sympathetic to and supportive of the Jewish faith. Yet, they stopped short of being full Jews in lifestyle and in circumcision. Remember now, 
prior to the coming of Jesus, uh, in order to be saved, you had to go into uh, a circumcision and you had to follow the Jewish lifestyle. All right. So the Jewish people at that time respected and appreciated these God-fearing uh, uh, Gentiles, uh, but they could not really share uh, their life at home or food with them because they were, in fact, Gentiles and not yet full Jewish converts. So they were classified as God-fearers. You know, there are some, there are, there are people that we know that have not accepted Jesus Christ that are that are what we call good moral uh, sinners. Um, you know, they ain't cussing, they ain't smoking, they ain't drinking, they ain't cheating on their taxes, they ain't cheating on their wives. They're not cheating on their husbands. They just there, but they have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So they are good moral uh, individuals. They have high morals. Okay, now, uh, and in some cases, their morals of some is higher than some of the morals of Christians. It's interesting here. Those are the hardest ones to get saved. If a, a moral individual uh, with a high standard uh, runs across a Christian with a lower set of morals, uh, uh, then he don't uh, want uh, to accept Jesus based on him comparing his lifestyle to that lifestyle of the individual who's born again but living a, uh, an amoral life. Okay? All right. Now, watch this. And that's where you hear me talk about this whole idea of representing uh, uh, Christ Jesus correctly to the earth. It is our responsibility to the world. It is our responsibility to, uh, and I hear us say, represent. I didn't say represent. I said represent. Because in some cases, he's been uh, uh, presented wrongly. So we want to represent him correctly. Okay? Now, watch this. Uh, and pray to God always. Now, uh, because of the way uh, uh, the, uh, the life and the heart of Cornelius is described, we see a man who is obviously has a real relationship with God. At the same time, he was not a part of the mainstream of, of Jewish life. You know, now here, here it is. Uh, we see, just like in our, in our society right now, uh, there are individuals who, who are, 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 in their own eyes, uh, uh, supreme to others. One of the reasons, one of the worst things that we can have in the church is that idea of supremacy. And again, a uh, part of white supremacy uh, infiltrated into the uh, the church, and and it caused that divide that one group of people is better than another one simply because of the color of their skin. All right. And this is where the uh, inequality comes in. Uh, and this is why we, uh, God is raising up young black people, young white women, men that are uh, now bringing balance to what the word of God says. That, that uh, white supremacy, it infiltrated the church, which causes uh, the, the individuals to have that, uh, that superiority attitude. Someone asked me, well, uh, uh, <clears throat> there ain't no black church, and there ain't no white church, there's just one church. I said, uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a perfect world, that would be true. The, the, the truth is, if, is that some of the uh, uh, white forefathers would not allow blacks to attend the church as they were, so blacks had to go during the slavery times uh, and form their own church, even though they were overseered by white individuals to make sure they didn't say anything of that would cause an insurrection. <laughs> that they would storm and get out of their slavery. And that's why they even created a, a, a black Bible, which was a, well, a slave Bible, which was on purpose and intentionally left out certain scriptures that talked about freedom, liberty, and, and things like that. Okay, now, back to my sermon. Now, so, <clears throat> verse 3, about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision. Again, watch this. Uh, uh, he saw clearly in a vision. Uh, an angel of God coming to him and saying, Cornelius, uh, and when he observed him, he was afraid and said, uh, what is it, Lord? <clears throat> so he said to him, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now watch this. This, uh, this individual was praying and his prayers was accepted by God and God in turn was directing him what to do with his money. Okay. That's part of the stewardship. The, the Bible says where a man's treasures are, that's where his heart also. If you want to see what a man loves, look at his wallet. Look at his checkbook. Look at where he's giving. Because you put your money where your mouth is, okay, where your heart is, okay? 
And so, so the angels visited him and said, man, God is happy about your prayer life. And he's also happy about what you have been giving. Okay. Now, if you are balling up a quarter, a dollar, whatever it is, and hiding it, throwing in an offering, that means you are ashamed of what you're giving. <laughs> so, you know, whatever, if you only got one, if you only got a dollar to give, give it boldly, you know. Give it. God wants us to come throw, but to the throne of grace boldly. So I'm bold and happy to bring what I'm bringing. I ain't, I ain't no, what they say in the street, ain't no shame in my game. So, but here is what God was saying about him. Man, we are proud of what you gave. Not how much you gave, but the fact that you are giving according to, to, to your measure of faith. All right, now watch this. Uh, it says, uh, your prayers and your arms have come up uh, as a memorial uh, before God. Now, as a result of your prayer life and a result of your giving, not either or, but both, uh, now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with a Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. Now, notice here, I want you to see several things. Watch the accuracy of the word of God here. We see him, he says, I'm, I want, I'm telling you who to see him, I'm telling you where to send them to, and I'm telling you who to send to. Uh, now notice here, God tells us part. He does not tell us the whole thing. Uh, that's why we need each other, because you know part, I know in part. And when people, even with the area of prophecy, we know in part and prophesy in part. And, and, you know, there are individuals out there that's trying to justify the prophetic words that have gone over. Trump going to have it back to back. Trump going to have it and it's not happening. And so now they come up with, uh, with other reasons why uh, it didn't happen, you know. Uh, and, and in some cases, people come up with erroneous doctrines uh, 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 to support their ideology. And, you know, uh, and some of it is based on pride. Some of the people out here is just prideful. Uh, uh, they can't say I was wrong or they can't say I didn't understand. You know, just like you can preach to your level of understanding, we prophesy in our, uh, according to our level of understanding. And sometimes we, uh, we miss it and it ain't nothing to say, but I missed it and, and move on. But instead, pride will try to get you to try to make it right. Everybody been in a relationship with, with somebody and, and you, they can't say, I'm sorry, I don't care what happens, you can catch them red-handed wrong, and they can't say, I'm sorry, because pride is in them. And I'm here to say the body of Christ, we have to admit, hey, I don't know, hey, I made a mistake, I don't know. I had people come to me and prophesy to me that I was, my building, uh, is going, we're going to have a, what do you call it, a, 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 it shall go easy. I mean, I'm, and I, you know, I'm praising the Lord. Yeah, you're going to be able to build when we paid off in two years. Yeah, hallelujah, glory to God. Yeah, somebody going to bring you the key. Yeah, yeah, because out in the, in the hood, people said, a dope man going to come in there and pay it off. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, the little old white man going to hang with a bag of money. I heard all them problems. None of them happened. So I'm not, I'm not, I didn't throw out prophecy. I believe in it, you know. Uh, I know that we know in part and we prophesy in part. And I know all prophecy is conditional. And I don't know whether uh, uh, we met the conditions or did not meet the conditions. But as far as uh, 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 coming out the way I wanted to come out, it did not, okay. But I ain't mad at nobody. I ain't upset with nobody. I, don't, I still want a, a word from all those individuals who prophesied to me, okay. But there is a responsibility that we have when we receive the word of God, whether it's the prophetic word or was the written word, or, is that we have the spirit of truth and we have a responsibility to discern for our own self, you know, and not be deceived and to not be uh, 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 destroyed. Uh, he has given us the spirit of truth. Uh, he has given us the word of God uh, to discern. It's our responsibility. And if it don't turn out my way, I go hallelujah in the high. He, he tried the best he could. Uh, let's move forward. Okay, now, uh, uh, about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision. We're not told specifically here that uh, Cornelius was praying, uh, but it was the ninth hour, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And this was the customary time of prayer for the Jews. Also, as Cornelius related in the incident in Peter chapter, in, in, um, uh, 10, uh, in the same chapter, verse 30, he specifically said that he was praying. Peter, later on, he recounts his uh, version of the story. He says he was praying because it was his normal time. Now, he clearly, uh, he saw clearly 
in a vision uh, uh, an angel of the Lord. Sometimes in our vision, we don't quite know what we see. We see that even with Paul. Or Paul said in Romans, I mean, in, in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, uh, he says, uh, he says, uh, whether I was in the body or out the body, I couldn't tell. God uh, uh, know it. Uh, the, in the Bible later on, he says in, in Corinthians, uh, he said, we, behold, we look in a, 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 through a glass darkly, you know. In other words, I can't quite see. Some stuff I can't see it as clear as those. There are times in my, in my uh, spirit, in my relationship with God, I can see quite accurately and I can see quite clearly the intent of an individual heart. And then other times I can't find my keys. I don't even know what keys have I got. You know, so that is all part of the humbling process that each of us can go through. All right? All right, now watch this. Cornelius, it's significant that uh, God spoke to Cornelius directly, even calling him by name. Now, let's talk about this for a second. Sometimes in relationship, I, uh, uh, God don't call your name, you know. <laughs> don't get it twisted. A lot of times, God don't call no your name. With me, I don't think God ever called me Robert. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's like some of my prophet friends. Uh, some of my prophet friends, uh, they don't even know my name. <laughs> they, they don't know my name. They think my name is Rejoice. <laughs> I, got a, I got a card the other day. Somebody said my name was Rejoice, Rejoice. That's not none of my name. <laughs> you know, uh, but I'm saying here that, the, that but the content inside of it was quite good. I like the content, I, even though it was not necessarily my name. So, but God called his name, all right? And he says it's also significant that Cornelius responded with a healthy fear of the heavenly host. He was afraid, okay? All right? Now, and this shows that Cornelius had a real relationship with God. Now, notice what it says here. Send for Simon, whose surname is Peter, all right? I want you to know who I'm directing you to. Uh, uh, probably Cornelius didn't even know who Peter was. But he knew that he should do what God had told him to do and that he could trust God. I don't know who Peter is, but if I know if God's sending me to Peter, he must be all right. Okay? Now, he said, I, I, I'm trusting that God is speaking to me and that he will also speak to Peter. Notice what it says here. He will tell you what you must do. So I've got to trust in God's direction and then trust that God will uh, will speak to uh, the individual, and they'll be a blessing to me. Watch this. If God, I always ask people, I love asking people in their interviews uh, when they come and join with me, did God send you? If God sends you, then you and I can work through whatever difficulties he has uh, uh, that we uh, com uh, confront with. And he's going to put milk in my breast to feed you. I'm going to have words of life for you. I'm going to be able to uh, grow you up in the faith. I'm going to be able to give you direction, insight, and understanding to cause you to mature and go to the next level. Why? Because God sent you, and if God sent you to me, I'm spending time in prayer so that the words that I have are for you. They are life. That they are zoe. That they'll take you to the next level. They'll cause growth and produce maturity. I'm going to put you on a track that caused you to become uh, uh, built up in the most holy faith so you can come to a place where you soar with God. All right, now watch this, verse 7. And uh, 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 notice here the first part, he will tell you what you must do. God sent an angel in a, in a vision to Cornelius, but he used a man to preach the gospel to him. So let me tell you something. Don't you think, well, I won't. i got to get it all from God. Don't buy that lie. God's going to only give you a certain part, and then the other part, he's going to use a man or a woman or a, a, to help you, a boy or a girl, uh, to tell you what you must do. Now, now, verse 7, and when the angel who spoke to him had departed, notice there, the angel was on assignment. Once the angel did on his assignment, this particular angel left, and Cornelius called, notice he didn't wait. As soon as the angel told him what to do, he called two of his household servants uh, and a devout soldier from among those who waited 
on him continually. So he says, there are individuals uh, that are working with me that I can trust to do what I tell them to do. You know, in a, as a pastor and as a leader, uh, as a parent, uh, you know, you got some kids that's going to do exactly uh, what you want them to do. But then you got some other kids uh, that's going to do what they what they want to do and not what you want to do. <laughs> Uh, in, in my training of worship people, my job is to spend time to help them understand the atmosphere that I'm trying to create create, and what types of songs that I want in order to, to, to uh, work in, in harmony with the anointing that I have uh, than the anointing on my house. There are times individuals uh, will come and try to bring an anointing from another house and go, ho, 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 wait a minute. No, 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 don't sing that over here. Ain't nothing wrong with the song other than it's not a flow other than the fact that it is not equal in terms of anointing that we have. It may be a greater anointing. I'm not on that page yet. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, but, but I, I'm trying to uh, create a certain atmosphere that will cause uh, uh, my anointing and the house anointing to be, be magnified. And so you have to be obedient to the directions that are given. There are, uh, in my church, uh, you, you don't turn the house over to individuals who are going to do what they want to do and not what you want to do. <laughs> uh, God is not turning his, his ministry over to wild men, wild women who are going to just say whatever they got to say. You know, uh, 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 I got to say what God said. I don't care whether man like it or not. I got to say what God has shown me. Well, you don't understand the whole concept of God because there is that place in God where God has not given you permission to speak simply because he's given you information. Woo! Shut up a bit. All right, now watch it. So he says, now I'm going to find a servant, a household servant that worked up closely with me and going to know what I want and know how to do it. And I'm going to give me a devout soldier, one who has different military skills, one who's not just a servant, one that's a warrior, one that's going to take the word. And regardless of what obstacle come their way, they're willing to fight to make sure that I get over to Peter. I'm headed to Peter's house. I wonder how many of you are headed to Peter's house. And somebody would try to say, let's go another way. Or somebody would say, OK, you don't need to do all that. You ain't his slave. But a warrior. A warrior soldier said, no, 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 no. Hold up. Wait a minute. Back up. I'm under direction. I am loyal. I must do what God said. I wonder how many men and women in the church of God have been on their way to grow and on their way to success. And they stopped and listened to Boo Boo over here. And Boo Boo impregnated them with some doubt about the, the, uh, about the pastor, about the leader. And they stopped from doing their assignment and went back. <laughs> Uh, you got to tell some people sometime, I'm, I'm on my way to Peter's house. <laughs> All right, come back there. Watch this. Now, uh, 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 a devout soldier from among them who waited on him continually, and so when he explained... All these things to them. There are certain things uh, when you serve the man of God or the woman of God that you hear that other folk don't hear because you are not willing to fight. You are not loyal enough. Um, let me tell you, in 2021, you need to get rid of folk who are not loyal around you. you. I don't care if you're married to them. I don't care if they're your mama, your daughter, your kids, your cousin, your in-law, your outlaw. If they're not loyal to you, you've got to make a decision. Uh, and you've got to say, listen, I, I don't need you around me because one of the priorities that I need in my life in 2021 is loyalty. <laughs> all right, now I should. So when he explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. All right, Cornelius called two of his household and a devout soul. Apparently, the faith of Cornelius was contagious. All right, uh, and those that were in his household and under his command, who also honored God of Israel, based on his relationship. They said, oh, my God, I want to have a relationship like you got. Oh, my Lord, I know I'm in the army under Rome, but I've been watching you, uh, Cornelius, uh, and you've got some specialty going on. Uh, I want the God that you got. <laughs> it kind of reminds me, y'all remember the lady, the Bible says that she was captured uh, by uh, Nahum, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the, Nahum, the, the warrior in the Old Testament. And the Bible says he was a leper. He was a mighty, mighty man, but he was a leper. And the woman who was taken into captivity said, Ooh, woo, I wish you was over in Israel. We got a man of God over there. <laughs> if he laid hands on you, the leprosy would leave. I'm here to tell you, uh, there are people on your job. Uh, there are people in your house uh, that 
that need to be around you. And as you lift up God, and you have a God be a person of high character, you will find that you'll have influence even over your boss, influence even over your servants, influence even over your workers. All right. Now watch this. Verse number nine. The, the next day, as they went on their journey and drew near to the city, Peter went up to the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, and then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they were ready, he while they made ready, uh, he fell in a, uh, in a train. Okay, now I want to say this here, that one of the times while you're in this month of fasting, don't be afraid to, uh, uh, to journal your dreams. Don't be afraid to write down. Don't be afraid to take a nap. Come on here, a cat nap, uh, uh, as it were, and allow God to speak to you in your dream. Uh, as they journey, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter, Peter went up to the housetop to pray. As God spoke to Cornelius, and as Cornelius sent the messages to, to call Peter, God also spoke to Peter himself. Listen, uh, uh, listen. God works on both sides. Uh, you out there that thinking God is telling you to marry somebody, he got to tell the other person too. Come on, yeah. This ain't one-sided. Come on, glory to God. Uh, you must understand that if you are going to marry, then God's got to speak to somebody sooner than he got to speak to both of them. Uh, you know, if you're going to be a daughter then, uh, or a son, uh, then god got to speak to both sides, not just the one side. All right. Uh, and typically, this is how God operates. He speaks to several people about a matter and not just one. Then confirmation is provided, uh, and out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. Okay? These two men were 30 miles apart, uh, uh, but they must be brought together. I'm here to tell you that God knows how to bring you with your destiny. He knows how to bring you to the right person in your life. Uh, uh, there's no space and time with God. Uh, God knows exactly how to get them together. He knew exactly how to get your mama and your daddy together to produce you. He know how to raise this thing. All right. Uh, uh, in order that they may meet uh, while Joppa is uh, busy with his trades uh, and uh, Caesarea uh, with its great shipping entries uh, will, uh, uh, will know nothing of what's going on. God was arranging things behind the scene. God within the shadows uh, was keeping watch above his own and he was sending angels to Caesarea and grass and uh, a trance into Joppa. <laughs> Thus they were brought together. <laughs> He, uh, he put one brother to sleep. I ain't mad at you. I tell people if, if I'm preaching too long uh, and you go to sleep, as long as you wake up with a vision, I ain't mad at you. I, I, <laughs> Peter went up to the housetop to preach. Uh, now, in that culture, the housetop was normally used as a sort of patio. Okay? There was nothing strange about people, Peter going to the upper room or to the housetop to pray. All right? Then he became very hungry. This happens during prayer. <laughs> Uh, distractions uh, in our body come to try, as we are, uh, we try to be directed uh, uh, to God. However, God used these very distractions to speak to Peter. He fell in a trance. All right, look at, let's look at verse number 11. Uh, let's look at verse number 11. And saw heaven open, and saw heaven open, this is why Peter was in his trance, uh, and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him, let down to earth. In it was all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts and creeping things, birds of the air. And a voice came to him, said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, notice that, but, but Peter said, No, not so, Lord. For I have heard, for I have never eaten anything coming unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times. And the object was taken up into heaven again. Oh, okay, I want you to see here. Peter is praying and seeking the face of God God speaks to him a dream, and he resists it. Cornelius is praying. The angel shows up in a vision, and he immediately yields to it. Peter has a relationship with Jesus. He has been following Jesus three and a half years. Cornelius 
as not even a Jew. He's not even in covenant. But yet still, he heard and obeyed. Peter resisted. Watch this. Now, all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. Peter saw all sides of kosher and non-kosher animals uh, displayed in this sheep-like uh, background. You know, the Bible says a great sheep with four corners. Then Peter heard a command, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And when Peter became very hungry and wanted to eat during prayer, no doubt regarded uh, uh, it as a distraction. Yet God used it by speaking to him in a vision regarding food. His hunger perhaps made him pay more attention. A voice came to him. We don't know exactly what it was like for Peter. It's rare. Here we go. For God to speak in an audible voice. Now let me just say this. God rarely speaks through an audible voice, but he will do it, you know. So open yourself up to it. He's going to speak to somebody sooner or later. He may not speak to you, but it's in the Bible that he has done it. He might just do it to you. He might just do it for you. So it is here. That's not his normal way of speaking. All right, here we go. Uh, more often he speaks to our inner man uh, uh, as, a, as a vision. Uh, can be seen by our mind's eye. Even so, we can hear the voice with our mind's ear. So the mind has an eye and the mind has an ear. Okay, all right. So, so there are times that I hear things uh, in my spirit uh, is not with my outer ear. Okay, and then there are times that I, I hear things with my outer ear. <laughs> my, and nothing on my spirit, man. My, my spirit ain't got nothing to say. All right. Here we go. Rise, Peter. Slay and eat. This obviously went against Peter's uh, commitment as a Jew, which was never to eat anything except kosher food. Certainly all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and birds of the air, there was non-kosher animals included. Not so, Lord. Peter responds with both absurd and yet typical of us. He said no to the Lord. The only legitimate answer to a request from the Lord, our Lord, is yes. You know, Mary said, I don't know, I ain't no had no man, but be it under me. I don't understand none of what you're trying to say, but okay. I know it's you, and I'm going to say yes, okay? That's the answer that you and I must have, okay? All right. Now, why should I want you to know here, Peter had a bad habit of telling Jesus no. We see that in Matthew chapter 16, verse 22, and John chapter 13, verse 8. Uh -huh. If you compare Peter's response, not so Lord, to Cornelius, the uh, the unequal one, the, the Gentile, uh, 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 his answer was, what is it, Lord? <laughs> On that day, it seemed that Cornelius was more responsive to God than Peter was, okay? Peter had pretty much put God in a box of limitation. Are you putting God in a box of limitation? What God can't do for you? Are you putting God in a box uh, that says uh, he'll do it for others and he won't do it for you? That God is a white God? Uh, God, uh, he don't love you? Don't let nobody put you in that box. God loves all kinds. <laughs> God is a God. He honors faith. Uh, and you and I uh, uh, have to move in faith. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to, to, uh, to, to, to please God. And so coming to a place where God is pouring out information uh, uh, and revelation and insight. Back in the day, you did not have access to the knowledge uh, that you have now. Now we all, with the uh, internet uh, 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 and making the world flat, we have access to all information about our God. And so we can learn about it and we can stir up our faith uh, so that if God is giving out airplanes, you can get one. If God is giving out mansions, you can get one. If God is giving out miracle anointing, you can get one. If God is uh, establishing you in the earth as a voice of the Lord, you, it can be you today. By faith, you can move in that division. All right, now watch this. Uh, 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 <clears throat> Peter, Peter, was, Peter was pretty much had God in a box of limitation. Now, God was going to shake Peter up and change his thinking, and he can do the same to you. He says, okay, Peter, 
I'm going to shake, I'm going to rock your world, baby, you know, because you put a limitation on me, and I'm about to take the limits off. I dare you to take the limits off of God in your life. I dare you to say, okay, God, uh, 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 the moon, the sky is the limit. I'm going to trust you uh, to do the supernatural. I've heard other folk getting gold in their mouth. I want to see some gold. <laughs> I, I said, I've heard other people uh, raise the dead. I want to raise the dead. I, I've heard other people are uh, having super, supernatural uh, manifestation of the glory of God. I want you to do the same thing for me because you're not a respected person. Okay, with God, uh, there's equality in God. <laughs> he loves us all the same. There's no favorite in God. All right, now watch this. Uh, uh, that, Peter was saved. Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, and Peter had been greatly used by God. At the same time, Peter was still Peter. Peter didn't use, uh, God didn't use him because he was perfect, but because he was in the right direction and he was in the he was available. He was available. Are you available today? We are uh, often fall into the trap of thinking that we must be perfect uh, uh, until God can really use us. God can use you just the way you are. God can use you. Just the way he's looking for a yielded vessel, and what fasting and praying will do is call you to yield and cause you to be open. Uh, you need to make up your mind. God, I'm available. I'm not just going to sing this song. I'm available to you. I'm going to be available. <laughs> All right, now, a voice spoke to him the second time. God uh, responded clearly to Peter uh, what God has cleaned up. Uh, or declared clean, uh, you must not call common, impure, unholy, unacceptable to God. You know, see, what happens is uh, what the people try to do is in the races, is, uh, race baiting is try to say that one is better than the other. That's race baiting. You know, you and I are Christians. Both you know the same blood of, J of Calvary, the same blood saved black folk and saved white folk, the same blood saved men, saved women. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so there is an equality that we have in Christ. That's the only place uh, that we uh, have equality. So you have to run to the rock, glory to God, that's bigger than I. We have to run to the, uh, the safety place, uh, the secret place in God, uh, and he will download to us uh, the faith necessary necessary and the strategy necessary to overcome all obstacles. Watch this here. Uh, uh, in the Old Testament here, uh, in the Old Testament here, uh, thinking uh, this was unholy and common. In, 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 in the, in the uh, uh, Old Testament, there's two ways of thinking. There was either holy or there was common. Okay? The holy uh, uh, was made common when it came in contact with something common and could only be made holy again through ritual cleansing. Okay, When something was made holy, it was called, here we go, consecration. Remember, there are certain denominations that have consecration month. When it was made common, it was called desecration. So two words, Miles, consecration, Tiffany, <laughs> desecration. <laughs> Oh, we're creating word studies. We're creating biblical words, and those are words that you want to understand. Consecration, dedication. At this point, Peter believed that God well, uh, spoke only about food, but shortly uh, God showed him that he was really getting uh, uh, to, uh, at another point. You know, a lot of times uh, with God, it has more than one meaning when he speaks to you. All right, now watch this. Uh, there were, this was done three times uh, for deep emphasis. God repeated the vision three times, uh, uh, and Peter was to regard this as important. When God tells you the same thing over and over again, uh, he's trying to get your faith up. Uh, he's trying to let you know how important this thing is to him, okay? Yeah, he knows what he's already showed you. I already heard that sermon. I already heard that word. Well, it ain't because God didn't know, knucklehead. It's because you are not responding correctly. You know, you think about it. Uh, when a parent calls their kid uh, and the kid don't answer, the parent calls again. Now, when he calls again, he's trying to make sure that you heard. Now, if you don't respond when he calls you the second time, uh, uh, he may call you the third time. And he's calling you now to make sure that you heard him because he's got to deal with you. He's got to deal with you if you've heard me. If you've not heard me, i got to make sure you hear me. If you have not heard me, you still ain't moving. Now we've uh, uncovered rebellion on the inside of you, and i got to deal with you. <laughs> That's the way God is. 
if God keeps telling you the same thing over and over and you're not responding and you now know for sure that it's the voice of God, but you're choosing not to, then God has to deal with you. And guess what? He's dealing with you not as some rebellious knucklehead. He's dealing with you as a son. And a son, he says, I will chase you to get your attention. All right, now that, you know, okay, I got to get your attention because you ain't paying no attention to me. I've got to discipline you because I love you, and I know I've got to break that spirit of rebellion that's in you. Parents, you don't never love your kids too much to discipline them. He says, if I really discipline my kids, I love them. When I had my big gym uh, and I'd have hundreds of kids come in there, man, uh, boy, uh, uh, there were kids in there that were bad. I mean, they were untrained, uh, and I love them. Come here, man. You can't do that over here. No, 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 no. Come here. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. And uh, uh, and I was showing them the love of God uh, by talking to them, you know? The ones that, that didn't get a chance to get in the dish, but I just put them out. Okay, now, you just go ahead, you go ahead and, and, and leave. All right. Now, watch this. Here we go. Verse 17. Now, while Peter wondered within himself what the vision uh, which uh, he had seen meant, behold, uh, the men who had been sent from Cornelius uh, had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, uh, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. When Peter thought about the vision, that word thought about could be used meditate. Remember, anything that you meditate on, you get revelation in. When God gives you a dream, well, meditate on it, he'll give you interpretation. When God gives you a scripture, meditate on it, he'll give you an interpretation of it. If you run across somebody in your life, in your job, in your, in your home, in your family, meditate and pray about them. God will give you insight about how to interact with them. The Spirit said unto him, whoa, now he's not in a vision, now the Spirit is talking to him. All right? Uh, behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, and go, uh, go down and go with them. Don't carry any doubt with you. <laughs> Doubting nothing. Why? Because I sent them. Woo! Woo, 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 woo. Let me tell you something. Yeah. The, the thing you want to know about uh, people that come in your life, did God send them? All right? There are people coming in your life to add, <laughs> to subtract, to, to, to multiply, or divide. <laughs> And so you've got to know who sent them in some cases, uh, especially we're going to work up close and personal, and, and what's your purpose? All right, did you come to add or, or subtract? <laughs> did my life get better with you or did life got worse with you? All right, <laughs> all right. Now, watch this. Uh, now, when Peter wondered within himself what the vision should mean, which he had seen, when the vision when the vision ended, Peter did not have it all figured out. So the vision gone, man, I have no idea what God was talking about, all right? Again, the proof of desire is in pursuit. So if you want to really know what God has said, you got to keep pursuing it, all right? Uh, then uh, uh, that came in time, and it came as God spoke to Peter through a vision just arriving at his door. The Spirit said to him, now previously in Acts chapter 10, verse 13 and 10, 15, it was simply that a voice uh, spoke to Peter, all right? Now we are told that the Spirit spoke to Peter. This was God in the person of the Holy Spirit speaking to Peter. Three men are seeking you. Go down there with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. So you have to rehearse this. Okay, I know God put us together. I know God wants us to work together. I know God has given me this job. I know God has given me this car. I know God has given me this house. I know God has, I mean, you begin to name things that God has given you that causes faith to rise when it looks like you're going to lose. No, no, no. God gave this thing to me. God gave me this baby. She can't die. He can't die because God gave it to me. Okay, listen, I'm probably not going to get a chance to finish this up today. I'm going to wrap this baby up uh, in just a second, uh, and then we'll do part two of, of, of uh, equality in God on next week. Watch this, what happens here. Uh, at this point, God had not told Peter that his visitors were Gentiles. Woo! Uh, 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 won't you write down on your paper, God got some secrets. <laughs> you know in part, and you prophesy in part. God sometimes holds back stuff until you're ready to receive it. Certain revelation he can't give to you because of your bigotry, uh, your bias will not allow you to fully embrace it. Okay? So he holds it back. Okay? So 
let's just say, if you sometimes you've already met your husband or your wife and you don't even know it, and God has not showed that to you because you know she or he is not in the package that you thought that they would be in. They took this or took that, and so he ain't gonna show it to you. So he gotta let that grow on you before he show it because your eyes uh, 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 will can sometimes uh, reject what God has for you. Woo! Okay, here we go. All right, watch what it says here. Uh, uh, normally, a godly Jew like Peter would not associate in this manner with the Gentile. Knowing this, and knowing Peter's previous resistance, not so, Lord, God simply surprised Peter with the knowledge of, uh, uh, that these men were Gentiles. All Peter needed to know was that the, sp the Spirit said, I have sent them. Oh, my God. Woo! <laughs> Let's stop right there. Uh, I believe that God has surprises for you. We'll start right there at 21 uh, <laughs> on next week. There are surprises that God has for you. Uh, that's what he says when he says, eyes have not seen, neither ears have heard, neither have it entered into the heart of things which God has prepared for you. But he says, but by the Spirit. <laughs> You know, so I believe that one of the things that we're doing is we have to learn to trust God. Well, let me give you a thought or two before we pray. Uh, uh, in 2021, 21 is a very interesting number. 21 is a year at a time uh, where all of a sudden when you become 21, you're now entered into a new uh, level of maturity. Uh, at 21, you're now able to do things uh, that you could not do, you could not legally do uh, before you got 21. And so I believe in the year 2021, uh, we are, we are, we're going to another level of, of, of opportunity and responsibility. Yes, now at 21, I'm able to, to buy a, a car, I'm able to buy a house, I'm able to buy legalized liquor. So there's a responsibility that comes when we get to 21. Uh, but there's also accountability. You're now accountable uh, at a certain, at this age, uh, uh, you're now accountable in some states. To, you now can vote. You can now uh, uh, drive. You can now own certain things. Uh, so there's accountability. I believe uh, that God is going to cause the church to have a new opportunities uh, and a new level of accountabilities uh, and a new responsibility. Uh, 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 at 21, uh, back in the day, I, I Again, I don't know the laws on this, but back in the day when you got a certain age, you had to register uh, back uh, back when I was a young man uh, uh, to go to the armed forces. Uh, uh, so now you were, you were being uh, uh, considered uh, to fight uh, and considered uh, to, uh, to, to uh, as a full grown man. Uh, so I believe that the church uh, is going into a new level of accountability, a new level of authority, and a new level of responsibility uh, to do what they previously not had to do. Uh, I believe that the church now can no longer be quiet about things that have been quiet. Uh, we've been too quiet about some areas. Uh, we, in some circles, uh, we only have a spiritual gospel. We only want people to get saved, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, be good husbands, be good wives, uh, pay your taxes, don't steal. Uh, but I believe that the gospel, that, that there's also not just uh, spiritual individuals, uh, but there must be social individuals as well. Uh, there were different prophets. Uh, there were prophets of uh, like Amos. Amos was a social prophet. Uh, and he says, wait a minute. Uh, I was not a son of a prophet. Neither was I called into the church. Uh, but God took me out the field uh, and caused me to be a prophet. Uh, and he was a prophet that dealt with social issues. Uh, I believe uh, that this is the year that God's going to begin to raise up individuals who will deal uh, with social issues. Uh, I believe uh, that just like Moses uh, uh, had of old, uh, uh, Moses, uh, he left for Pharaoh's household uh, went in the wilderness, uh, and the Bible says uh, that when he ran across uh, Jethro's daughter, them they called him an Egyptian. Uh, you look like an Egyptian. You act like an Egyptian. But he was not an Egyptian, and he was a Jew. But when God touched him as a uh, as a Jew, uh, he went back to Pharaoh and Pharaoh's household uh, and dealt with all of the issues uh, because he understood the system. Uh, he understood how it worked. Uh, he know what door to go in. Uh, he know who to talk to. Uh, I believe that God is raising up you uh, just so you can talk to Pharaoh and Pharaoh's household because you understand the system and you've got to say, hey, your penal system is unjust. Your penal system is wrong. Your housing system is wrong. How you deal with homelessness is wrong. How you deal with incarceration
incarceration is wrong. I believe, church. That's part of your God job. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, I thank you for 2021. I thank you for breakthrough. I thank you for the voiceless having a voice. I thank you for equality in the spirit of God, uh, that there will not just be uh, uh, one voice, one-sided voice, uh, but there will be a voice of all nations. Uh, Lord, I thank you for breaking off the wrong image of the nation, uh, wrong image of ethnicity, uh, 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 and raising us up as men and women committed to your plan and to your purpose. In Jesus' mighty name, do it, Lord. Uh, and we'll give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, that's enough for today. <laughs> I really appreciate you and I really value. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you can accept him right now, right where you are. You can go from, like Cornelius, from being a, a, a Gentile to being born again, all right? Just repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask you for forgiveness right now. I believe that you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I repent and turn from my sin, and I invite you to come into my heart. I trust you, Lord, to lead me and guide me as both Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I want to activate uh, into you eternal life. Father, we release eternal life in this man, woman, boy, and child. From this day forward, we stir up the gifts of God inside of them that they all come to know you in a full relationship. We thank you now for breakthrough. We thank you right now for transformation. We thank you for hooking them up with the right information, the right relationship to be mentored and to become a full disciple according to Acts 20, according to Matthew 28. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Welcome to the family. In Jesus' mighty name. I know I threw a lot at you. Let's, it's offering time. Let's do something real quickly. If you look down in my descriptions, uh, you will see there, uh, there's a donation link uh, in the descriptions. Uh, and all the other information we're going to put in our link there so you can get it. The uh, cash app for LWTCC, the cash app for Reach, R, Rejoice, R-E-J-O-Y-C-E-E. -E. Uh, you know, all of that will be there. We'll put down there the, uh, uh, you can mail, snail mail, uh, at PO Box 431827, uh, as well as. Uh, in Pontiac, Michigan, 48343. Uh, you can also go to PayPal at We Are Life Center Church. And our website is, of course, wearelifecenterchurch.com. Uh, you can also call at 248-345-4227. You know, the Bible says this, and I'm going to pray in just a second. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. Matthew 6, 21 says this, For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Now, I want to pray something that's very important. Hear me. I want you to listen to this because I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray right now for this. There are uh, poverty is, re is relative. If we, uh, if everyone around you uh, has similar circumstances, this notion of poverty and wealth is very vague. You know, when I was a little boy, you know, we we had for dinner greens and beans, uh, greens for dinner with bread. And the next day we had beans with bread. And so I didn't even know how poor I was until I went to my friend Butch house, and Butch was having <laughs> holiday meals every day. I'm like, I didn't know I was that pro poor. All right, uh, uh, so it's vague. Uh, Poverty or wealth only exists in relationship to the known qualities or expectations. And uh, then I went to John Wesley, and I began to see, uh, drive around with people who had their own private airplanes. I go like, this is what wealth looks like. But this is what I want to pray about. There's generational poverty, and then there's situational poverty. Okay, uh, And there are different. <clears throat> generational poverty is, is, designed, is defined as poverty for two generations or longer. That's, that's uh, generational poverty, two generations or longer. This is important, that's why I'm taking time to pray for you. And then the uh, situational poverty uh, is a shorter time and is caused by death, illness, divorce, the pandemic. 
So you got some individuals who are now are, are moved into uh, situational poverty because of what has happened. Okay, and this is temporary. Now, how do we move from poverty to middle class to wealth? I'm gonna give you a key. This is for my young folk out there. You gotta hear this. It's to you must give up relationship for achievement uh, for a time. You have to give up relationship for achievement for a time. And when you do that, you can move from poverty to middle class to wealth. A lot of people get caught up in relationship. Uh, they'll tell you when you go to law school or they'll tell you when you go to master's or they'll tell you when you go to your doctoral or your, uh, your uh, relationship is going to suffer between your husband and wife. So you want somebody in your, that understands you doing this support system because you must give up relationship for achievement. All right, let's pray. I'm going to pray that God would move you, uh, uh, would break the cycle in your life. Father God, in Jesus' name, we come against you. Generational poverty in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, and we break it. We break the spirit behind it that would continually, from one generation to another generation, model and talk about money and look at wealth at the same. In, in Jesus' mighty name, that they will, that they will have a, an opportunity uh, to have a, their minds renewed so they can see money, wealth, the way they handle money, the way they talk about money, uh, the, uh, the wealth differently that they will desire to own in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Father, pray for those situational poverty, those individuals uh, that as a result of the divorce, as a result of, of the pandemic, as a result of illness, uh, as a result of medical bills, as a result of, of unjust incarceration, uh, that they have been put in a situation that have caused them to be poverty, uh, to be below poverty. And so, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I ask for the power of the Holy Ghost to sustain them. I ask that there be a transfer of wealth. I ask for favor from banking and loaning institutions. I thank you for entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur a spirit being upon them and that someone would stand with them to get them through this time. Lord, I stir up my brethren. I, I stir up my Christians. I, I stir up my men and women of God to be on the lookout to help other individuals just as this Gentile uh, Cornelius uh, gave money and helped. Uh, Lord, uh, as well as fast and prayer, let other individuals rise up and utilize their resources uh, uh, to help others. Uh, Father, I bless uh, LeBron James, uh, uh, Lord, and his attitude uh, uh, with his money to help individuals uh, uh, in Ohio and around the world. Bless him, protect him from witchcraft uh, and warlocks. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the NBA guys, uh, uh, those guys uh, in that even have worked with me, uh, that, that have helped uh, in the inner city. Lord, I bless them, uh, all, my, all of my uh, uh, Pistons uh, 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 players uh, that have given over the years, uh, all the NBA, all the, the Hollywood people that that do things behind the scenes that we don't know about, like uh, Denzel Washington uh, 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 and others. Lord, I, I don't know their names. So, Lord, bless them uh, to help uh, and use their wealth. They can't eat at all. Uh, Lord, even like uh, President, ex-President Barack Obama said, I can only eat so many steaks. So, so Father, wisdom and insight, and allow the money to be used to help others. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name, uh, we thank you for it. Amen. Lord, now, Father, I release an anointing for wealth, uh, for increase, uh, for favor, uh, uh, and influence in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. Thank you for allowing me to be me, uh, uh, allowing me to preach, pray, and, and, and just share my heart to you. You know, now, uh, I value you so much. Thank you so very much for watching and being a part of our, our, our show today. Uh, our program today, uh, 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 share it with other individuals, leave comments, uh, you know, eat the meat, spit out the bones, uh, uh, you know, and let's, 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 let's be about our father's business. Uh, we're only equal in God. God bless you. I love you guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get your dance on. Get ready. Jesus, Jesus, be a fish. All around me. I'm asking you to protect me. Come on. As I travel. I not only know you can. I know you will. Fight my mouth. If I keep still. Jesus, be a fish. Every, every. I need a I see you, I see you.